Welcome back to part T with Becky and Kenzie. Today, our topic is all about the feelings of feeling unlovable. So before we start, I know Becky, you have an oil that you want to put on. <laughs> I'm gonna put on my oils as well, because as always with any heavy topic, you wanna make sure you're still taking care of yourself and replenishing that heavy uh, feeling, so. We're gonna oil up before we start. Yeah, this is definitely an oil. The bottle won't. Okay. I haven't <laughs> this oil in a while. This uh, definitely this topic calls for oils. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what oil are you using today? I am using Valor today, which is a specific blend by Young Living, um, but it's definitely for emotional uh, replenishment. That's how I see it as. So. I love, that's my go-to, but for this one, oof, my whole, I don't know if you can see, wait, where am I? The goosebumps. Ooh, goosebumps. This one, <laughs> I'm using Release. That's a good one. Which for me is really powerful. This, my whole body tingles. I know when people talk like woo-woo, like oils, yeah. and I was like, mm, but because I was skeptical about that. Like, really, you feel like whatever. This is one of those for me that just you actually feel emotionally, like I feel this like, mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, I just, <clears throat> I don't know. That's good for this topic because the point of the whole feeling unlovable topic is to release those feelings of feeling unlovable. So that is a perfect oil to yeah, this accompany is a huge this is a huge blend of oils. So I'll get started with our topic. Um, again, feeling unlovable. Um, so that can come with a lot of different emotions. Um, it comes with anger, it comes with loneliness. Um, so a lot of times the, the root of feeling unlovable comes from either an unexpected hurt or pain or rejection or just plain disconnect from people that are supposed to love you or that you're seeking love from. So um, feeling unlovable can feel like you, maybe you're either not enough or you feel like you're too much and you can't be loved for those reasons. So like I know for me, I've felt both feeling not enough, meaning I'm not doing enough, I'm not giving enough, that's why I'm not receiving the love I need back, or on the opposite side, I'm too sensitive, I've, I've been too dramatic, I'm too flawed or too broken to be loved. So I've felt both of those um, sides of things, and those can lead to those feelings of feeling unlovable. Um, and these beliefs that we create are, they can stem from either one thing, one incident, or it can be over a lifetime of feeling disconnected or, or feeling hurt or rejected. It doesn't always have to be one event that made you have this belief system. Um, so once we create that perception though about ourselves that we are unlovable, that affects every relationship thereafter once we've created that belief in our head. Um, so for me, feeling unlovable, it doesn't stem from not feeling loved as a child from my parents, which that can be the case for, for some people. But I mean, fortunately for me, that wasn't. However, feeling unlovable stemmed from my own trauma and my own hurt that um, I felt it was my fault. And, and the, then the shame cycle starts and you feel unworthy and you feel unlovable. Um, and then that in turn uh, kind of affected my romantic relationships. And so those are the types of times that I've felt unlovable. But again, there that's just my experience. You can feel this from any sort of, for any reason. Again, whether it's from a parent or from, you know, not getting support from your friends or it can literally stem from anything. And I know Becky will talk about where it stems from for her as well. Um, so feeling unlovable, for me, again, just means I've given so much love to others. And I know, Becky, you felt this too. We give so much to others because we're just naturally this nurturing being, but yet we don't receive what we need in return. And whether it's we're giving the love to the wrong people, or maybe we're just not understanding each other, um, whatever it is, we're not getting what we need back from them. Um, and I also want to make the point that we're not giving love 
to expect anything in, in return. Like we're not, that's not the reason we give love so much. It's just naturally you want to receive back and feel um, loved in return. It's not because we're expecting something that we give so much, but we do wish that we could get that in return. Um, so it's kind of like this unconscious response when someone we want to connect with doesn't respond to us. Um, and we can either try to turn towards that person more and try to love on them more, or we can shy away and turn away and shut down. So I've, again, had both of those things happen to me where I've tried even harder when someone pushes away and disconnects from me more, I try even more to love them, but that in turn just hurts yourself. Um, but I've also done the opposite and turned away when I felt unloved by people back. Um, and if neither of those are your responses, sometimes it just builds up into anger and resentment <clears throat> and our whole body reacts. Um, so whatever stories you make up in your head, you just start building up this anger about it, it's got to be me, I must be doing something bad. And again, it's that shame circle of being unworthy and undeserving of love. Um, so if, if you're reaching out and being met with nothing or being met with explosiveness or being met with pain when you're trying to reach out for help or just to express your feelings, um, a lot of times we we retreat in our emotions and we try to just protect ourselves then and that's where those negative thoughts come in because our brain is just trying to protect us and tell us these negative things about ourselves that we're unlovable and that makes it sometimes easier even though it's not a good you know thought pattern to have or at at the start it makes it easier to not so when someone does hurt us, it's like, oh, well, I already knew I was unlovable. So it's, it, try, it kind of makes it easier for us to deal with, even though that's not the healthy way to think about it. That is a, a reason why we may f tell ourselves that we feel unlovable because we're anticipating this hurt and rejection uh, from other people. And then it makes us easier to deal with because if we put it on ourselves, you know, it, it's not anybody else's problem. So um Again, I'm just looking at my notes here. I, I wrote feeling of I'm too broken to be loved because of my past trauma. Um, that's something that I've again dealt with in romantic relationships, just being angry at partners because I'm not receiving the support or the love that I need. And then again, holding that resentment and bursting out into anger because everything was held in and my needs weren't being met. Um, and then that causes loneliness. I was in a relationship for four or five years and felt very alone. Um, so it doesn't mean you don't have to, you know, you could be with someone and still feel lonely and still feel these feelings of being unlovable. Um, so I wanna pass it off to you, Becky, and you talk about your experiences of where those feelings come from for you. Yeah, you got me with, towards the end of that, I started to get teared up. Um, so my, I broke down, I guess my categories, of, but the way I interpreted was as unloved. So mm -hmm. like things that make me feel unloved. Um, and these are just past experiences. So the, like my relationship, like with my husband, he, like, he has nothing, like, I totally feel loved by him. It's everything else <laughs> that I feel unloved with. Um, so that's where I'm going to go with that. So I love that we kind of have both sides different yeah. experiences so that it's like the whole um, array of feelings. Right. Um, so for me, my past experiences, whether, whether I'm remembering them consciously or subconsciously, it's shaped the feeling of unloved or being unloved um and sometimes it's in my bones I don't know if like yeah. it's just like that so that release oil it's like to get everything unstuck and get everything out so the release for me could just be like maybe I'm crying mm -hmm. or maybe I'm angry or maybe I'm using my voice and everything that's like how yeah. You said bottle things. I also bottle things until I'm like a teapot boiling over and it's just like boom, 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 boom. Like mm -hmm. so it's releasing all that. 
sometimes too quickly, too much, too fast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some days for me, for me, I find are stronger than others. Mm -hmm. um, most days I try to tune out the negative noise in my head from the people who've hurt me in the past. So like how you said when you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm unlovable, so it's expected. Like that's what I got choked up with that because I also do that where I'm like, well, there we go again. No surprise. Another disappointment, right. another like hurt. Rejection. Yeah. yeah, the rejection. So <clears throat> let's see, where did I start this? So I have feeling unloved being a mom. And I think I did it with like my businesses. I don't know. I was writing this and I was really angry when I was writing this. So I knew that I was like, okay, this is a release of some stuff that's bothering me. So before being a mom, I felt unloved by being ignored. And it was kind of hard to put this in words. I was trying to really, cause it's certain feelings for me. I can't quite articulate. Yeah into actual words it's just it's like like I said it's that feeling like in my bones that I need to shake mm -hmm. um so when I would speak up being ignored um if I spoke up about things that bothered me or I didn't like when I tried to use my voice I was shut down by the by another person and it was that feeling of okay well because I don't have xyz materialistic things you know I don't have like everything designer labels. So I'm not important enough to be listened to. And it was like that mentality or that feeling um, of the poor girl who doesn't have designer everything. So just yeah. like being looked down on yeah. um, by others who maybe were not who I was supposed to be around because they had different um, values than me. They valued labels and materialistic things where I value um genuine people and just like connection and like deeper than the surface right um being a business owner I feel unloved not having support from others because I'm not part of those cliques and crowds in the business world of the people that only want to ride others coattails Mm -hmm. they want to they want me to buy from them help them on social media cheer them on do everything for them but they don't want to reciprocate so how Kenzie was saying like we're not like when we're giving it's not like oh well now you have to give me something it's just I'd like to receive what I'm what I'm putting out into the world I'd like to receive that back right. to feel support to feel like okay, well, you know, what I'm doing is, you know, cause and effect, and, you know, and then I've also had, which this looking back, because sometimes in situations, like when you're out, like we've talked about this before, like networking things, I'm not in like a judgy mentality. I'm in a, like a learning, like I'm trying to absorb, you know, who's, who does what, who are you, like, what's your business, like, because I genuinely want to learn, like, you know, what do people do? What do you do? And like going back and forth, you do this, I do this. I've literally had, and this was, I used to run and coordinate events for networking stuff. So I'm like the event organizer. And I literally had someone come to one of my events. They had to sit down right next to me. And that's when I get like that, it's funny because when I go somewhere, like, let's say I'm the first one or the second one, if someone is, let's say like here, like this is the seat and there's a whole like table and you have to sit here. I'm annoyed. I'm immediately annoyed. Cause it's like, can you just back up? Like, can you just give me my space? This was before pandemic, like social distancing. Like I was just like, get out of my space. So, <laughs> um, and I had someone, you know, they were in a similar um, business like mine. And all they did was just bash and talk shit about my business 
Mm -hmm. And I never even met this person. Like, I don't know you, you don't know me. And I started asking questions. Oh, what products do you use? And they would not like tell me the brand. I don't hide. Like if I use certain brands, I'm like, oh, I use this brand. Oh, you know, I use that brand. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Something is like not, so I'm like, oh, okay. So now I have this energy here and I'm like, because mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't want people to think. And that's something when we talk about protecting our energy, if someone is here with that kind of energy, I don't want others to think that I'm like that. Right. It's for whatever reason, being an empath or whatever, you know, that magnetic energy, or maybe it's because I'm sometimes more in a negative Mm -hmm. like a maybe like subconsciously I am being very negative and that's what I'm attracting so it's and then it's like oh um so being a mom being a mom I feel unloved postpartum and this hopefully I won't cry with this that's hard yeah yeah and I don't know why like this I think it bothers me so much because I do everything. I do everything I possibly can for Violet. And and there are deadbeat parents out there. There are deadbeat parents who don't take care of their kids. And the ones like me who will do anything, will walk through fire, anything and everything for their children or child. And you're going to come at me because you don't, you know, you did things differently, or you just have to make comments, you have to just like, say things. So, you know, being a mom and and just having those, like rude comments about anything that I'm doing, or just and it makes me around certain people, it makes me feel on edge. And just exhausted, like I'm tired Mm -hmm. of always having to defend myself over unnecessary comments that aren't even true. Um, you know, like the, and I guess it's like the, the mom shamers or the judgy moms. Um, but something that I learned because it was really (laughs) depending. So like when I'm PMSing, these things will bother me because my hormones are like, you know, being super sensitive and I'm just like, I'm either crying or I'm angry, you know, or it's like, I just want snacks, leave me alone, like, (laughs) let me like yell and cry and be annoyed. Um, So what I really learned from that, because how we ask each other or how we ask ourselves those questions over and over and over (laughs) to to try to receive the answers. So what I learned from that, how I'm interpreting that is, it's there. So if you're a mom or a parent, mom, dad, whoever, and you feel like this, please take what I'm about to say and hopefully it will help you feel better. I'm like still in tears trying to like get through this um, <laughs> mom thing. Um, so what I learned, those people that want to just say shit and talk shit to you about your parenting, it's their distorted reality. Mm -hmm. They're always having to talk shit. They're the negative Nancy's and the peanut galleries of shit moms who should worry more about their parenting of their own kids Mm -hmm. and their own shortcomings as a mom. And they're projecting their failures onto you. Mm -hmm. That's not okay. And this is when I get, so like, I'm getting mad because it's like, that's your problem because you know, I'm part of like some, some mom groups I've had to just leave because I'm just like, oh, this is too much negativity or too much complaining, too much judginess. I was going to say, it's so judgmental when yeah, you, oh when my you should just create a tribe of support because you're all going through the same thing. And yeah. that's what can create that feeling of being unloved or unsupported as a parent. Again, I don't have that experience yet. I'm not a mom, but I can see how, like, how, like, um, what am I trying to say? Like heavy that can be trying to do the best you can. And then everyone is telling you you're not doing enough or you're not, not you know, good. doing the right thing. Yeah. But luckily I have my two best friends who we parent similar or like we'll ask each other for advice. So I feel comfortable. They're like the only two that never judge. Mm. But like 
and That's it's like important. yeah so like I have them um but it's like and I think too because Violet was a preemie so like my cousins were my twin cousins were preemies and I used to take care of them when I was going to beauty school so I know how to take care of preemies because right. my uncle taught me and it's a whole so you want to talk about like mama bless you bless me yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> so so the mama bear in me I was already a mama bear when she was born but her being a preemie I became more overprotective and and I think that it's like I'm very strict with certain um things with her like we we didn't want I know some people do the co-sleeping mm-hmm. and I'm like for me I'm like I can't do that because I'll never sleep or mm-hmm. and for me I want Violet to be independent and I want her to have her own space mm-hmm. um we did sleep training which I was originally against because what I was reading online was like parents who let their child cry the entire night they're they're locking themselves in the bathroom turning the shower on letting their child cry like their their infant yeah cry all night and I'm like I, I'm not doing that I can't do that but we had help from Violet's pediatrician who had you know it was only a half an hour you let them and she's like most babies won't cry for that whole half an hour she cried for a half an hour. It took three days. It was the hardest three days of my life to hear her cry. Mm-hmm. And I, there I am just texting my best friends, like, distract me, tell me something. She's, or I'm like, she's crying, she's doing this. And then, yeah. you know, after those three days, like it got, it got better now to the point where she laughs. She, if she, she tells us, like, if she's tired, she gets annoyed. Like she'll get like, ah like she wants to go to bed and when we get her like in her pajamas and her little sleep sack blanket and when we get her in that she starts giggling she's kicking she's like excited so it's just it's to see that where she would be hysterical being in the room by herself to now she looks forward to bedtime so like healthy sleep habits so like there's certain things and then the peanut gallery is like oh, well, why are you doing this? Or you shouldn't do that. Or I did this when blah, blah, blah. And it's like, your stuff is outdated. Even my best friend who her kids are five and 10, five and 11. Uh, Like, so even let's just say 10 years ago, five years ago, things are different. Right. Um, Where she's like, oh, we didn't have that. Or like, you know, I didn't know about that. Um, this whole mom tangent I could go on and on about this because it that's out of all I think the unlove unlovable and unloved things the mom thing bothers me the most yeah. because I know I'm not a deadbeat mom right. you know and I know some of those well not that I'm friends with them but I know yeah. and have heard stories from other people and that shit pisses me off mm-hmm. where it's like they don't then I get into this whole they don't deserve that because how many people who want kids who never are able to and they they have all this love to give and they can't do that and then this jackass over here is just like you know being a jerk Mm -hmm. um so so in my next thing of notes um so I'm angry as you can see (laughs) um (laughs) Yeah, I'm angry because rightfully the, so though. Yeah, the common denominator. So all all three of these experiences is because I'm not being heard and I'm not being listened to. So when I was writing this, I was like, what is and as I'm writing it, I'm like, I'm not being heard. No mm-hmm. one's listening to me. You yeah. know, and it's just like talking to the wall or being pushed aside because I refuse to follow the crowd. Um And I have an example of that. So still going on my mom tangent. Um, So I was, what was it last week? I was at the park with Violet and I know it's so hard. I'm like, how do people make mom friends? Mm -hmm. Like how, like, you know, 
because like my friends like they live kind of far so it's like it's not like we could be like oh hey let's meet at the park it's like right. let's plan a weekend a month in advance because yeah. it's like we're over an hour away um he's true and and I'm like I don't like judgy moms but it's like now I'm gonna sound judgy where I'm like there are these two like rude ass moms <laughs> on a bench and you could see and they were just literally complaining you know like and it's like I try to look and smile and they just they didn't want to like acknowledge me so I'm like okay whatever I'm ignoring you now um and they're just complaining and complaining and one of their children there was this little boy that comes over upset to the mom about something I I wasn't really paying attention um because I was Violet and I'm you know playing with her on the swings and this little boy was so upset I guess something to do with the other the other kids that he was playing with or maybe they didn't want to play with him or whatever it was. And the mom basically tells him it's not a big deal and just like brushes his feelings aside and like shoes him away. And I'm like, and he was so upset. And I was just like, oh, I wanted to like punch that mom like in the face. And <laughs> like, can you parent your child? Like he's upset. Can you comfort him and stop complaining about nothing or whatever? Yeah you know complaining about and I feel like a lot of people do that not thinking that it has any effect on their kid because they think that oh it's gonna make them stronger if they just like brush it off and not like cry about everything but it's like if you're just there for them and comfort them then they won't react that way the next time you know and I think I saw this on I don't know if this was a meme or like a quote or something um so I'm probably botching this but it it was something to do with like, if you push your kids away with the little things, like their little things, yeah. they're not going to come to you with their big things. Right. So like you're shooing this kid away, basically saying like, your feelings don't matter. You're, mm -hmm. you're being dramatic or you're being ridiculous. And right. it's like, some, he's upset about something. What's bothering him? Right. Try to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know. And also something that's little to you could be their whole world. Could, mm -hmm. Like just because someone like they didn't get, you know, the color crayon they want and they're upset. Like you can see that as, oh, like it's not a big deal. Just pick another color to them. That's their whole world is getting to choose, you know, what color crayon they want. Like that's a big thing for them. So to shoo off what you think are the little things are really big things for them because they don't have this big scope of the world yet. That is their world. Or they're so. learning, like they're learning how, like feelings and emotions. And even Violet, if she's playing with her toys, there are certain toys that are more, um, Derek calls it an inny binny, but it's like a, it's a square and then it has like lines and then toys inside. So she has to stick her hand in and right. pull it, but it's difficult. So it's like, it's like a challenging toy for her to right. like develop and grow. She gets so frustrated with that toy that she will throw it she'll kick it and I'll <laughs> say what's the matter why are you frustrated so that she can understand like the feelings or you know mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to express herself and, then and also I'll not telling her not to feel that way either yeah like, yeah don't, don't be angry like no you're allowed to feel angry she's frustrated about that toy so exactly. ask her why she's feeling that way instead yeah. of saying oh you shouldn't be angry or, oh don't cry stop crying like that diminishes and invalidates their feelings oh when she cries I'm just like you know it's okay you can cry or you can let it out right um, only like sometimes like if she's <laughs> she's so rough with me with Derek she's she's like daddy's girl she'll she'll hug him she'll just like like with me she's like throw it like throwing elbows like throwing <laughs> elbows. but she knows like sometimes what did she last night she has one of her books it's a heavy book she dropped it on my on my leg like on the on my shin bone uh -huh. and I was like and I couldn't I was like oh my god ow. and yeah. she just she was like and I'm like it's oh. okay mommy's fine like it was a nice yeah. you know you're okay or mommy's yeah. okay and so she knows like if if I'm right. hurt or something hurt me or like with my finger here that I mm -hmm. that she's trying 
it's like this kid knows like oh mommy hurt herself mommy has a cut let me like try to touch this and I'm like yeah. I was like I can't certain like I have a high pain tolerance but certain like nerve pain or something I yeah. can't like um but all of that is to say like you're allowing her to feel her feelings so yeah. that she doesn't grow up feeling unheard unloved unworthy of all those things yeah. so like and even when she she'll just start yelling she'll go ah and I'm just like use that voice and or I'll yell so that she'll mimic me back yeah and I'm just like <laughs> ah and she'll go ah like louder <laughs> and it's so cute so and even my mom had said to her she's like use that voice like when you know when she was yelling so that was um I love I love that when she when she's very chatty. Yeah. I try to encourage that um so that she will as she gets older, she will continue to use her voice and not um not be afraid to speak up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess we could go into some tips. Yeah. Unless you have some more I yeah, I think, I guess, well, I know you have tips and I just have what you focus this is what on. I'm focusing on. Like, and I guess when I wrote it, yeah, I was just like, I'll just write this because I couldn't even think of tips. I'm yeah. Like, I was so angry. As right. you can see, my mom yeah. ran. Like, <laughs> that's good. I actually am feeling better with this release oil and like that yeah. I got that out. I just, I'm right. like, I feel a little lighter good yeah like that's also the point too it's like these videos are for us to release <laughs> that so that we don't keep it all in either and then if you can relate to it that's good too because then you don't feel so alone in these feelings because this feeling is very common like this is not something that you're going through alone a lot of people feel this way for a lot of different reasons it's just like my reasons were different than Becky's that can be for any any possible reason and again it's not one event that can make you feel like this it can be an array of a lifetime of things um, so when you are feeling unlovable or not feeling love from people um, or support um, it's important to kind of change your perception of that, not give in to the feelings of unworthiness and, and not being enough, but rather to change that. Um, so these are just some ways to kind of switch the narrative. Um, if you're feeling unlovable from a certain person or situation, maybe asking, uh, okay, maybe they, they do love me, they're just occupied with other things right now and are not able to hear me and hear my needs. Or maybe they do love me, they just don't know how to show it. Um, I know there's, I think there's like five different love languages. It's like acts of service, words of affirmation, gift giving, quality time, and touch. So the way you give love can be one of those, but the way you want to receive love can be different. And people, um, that's a conversation you have to have, especially if it's a romantic partner, or even if it's just a parent or a best friend. Um, maybe I'm giving, I'm showering you in gifts, but they mean nothing to you because that's not your love language. So, so having that conversation and, and trying, as long as you're able to be heard, of course, assuming that it's, you know, a healthy conversation, um, that can also help you feel more loved because maybe it's just not the right love language that you're receiving. Um, maybe um, you, you can switch it and saying, okay, maybe other people have hurt you. That's why you're unable to love me the way I need to. So flipping it that it's it's not your fault. Maybe they've been hurt and they're unable to love in the way that you deserve. Um, and again, that's nobody's fault. So, so removing blame from either side is, an, is a good way to kind of flip the narrative of feeling unlovable. Um, <clears throat> maybe having these issues of you know worthiness um, and feeling ignored um, activates, um, you know, triggers for the other person, and then they don't know how to respond to you. Um, so again, just switching that, that the way that you think about being unloved or unworthy can sometimes help. Um, or maybe, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe there is areas that you do need to develop yourself in, um, to more fully, uh, be able to trust people and, 
indeed feel feel love for yourself so that way other people can love you the way that you deserve if you're not loving yourself the way you deserve it's a lot harder for people to know how to treat you um that golden rule treat others the way you want to be treated treat yourself how you want others to treat you um so or it could just be that they actually don't love you and then that's not the right person to be in your life so it could be all of these scenarios but just going through that list and thinking okay maybe it's not me maybe it's you know these other things before coming to the conclusion that you're unlovable or unloved um that can kind of you know help your brain create these new connections and not keep you stuck in that hole um uh, what else do I have? Oh, and then my other tip was just to notice that other people, you're not responsible for anyone else's um, insecurities. A lot of time when you feel unloved, it's because they're projecting their insecurities onto you or their pain onto you, and you're not responsible to fix that with your love. I know that's something that I do a lot because, again, I'm just that empathetic, nurturing person, so I feel like even though they're um, being unloving towards me for their own reasons, I feel like I have to fix it with my love and that sometimes hurts me more. Um, so trying to remember to, you know, kind of step back in those situations and realize you're not responsible for anyone else's pain, um, but you are responsible for your own healing. So that's important. Um, and then I have here just writing uh, yourself a love note. If you have those feelings of feeling unloved, um, write yourself what you wish you heard growing up or what you wish you felt from a partner or, or a parent or a friend um, or business supporters. Write yourself all the things that you wish you received and then give it to yourself. Um, because again, we, we can only control so many things that other people do, but we can control ourselves and how we feel about ourselves by switching our thoughts, creating new patterns and, um, you know, giving yourself the love that you deserve that you're not receiving from other people. Um, it doesn't have to come from other people. It, it can come from yourself. Um, so those are pretty much all my tips. And then, of course, forgiveness comes along with all of this as well. So I know we have a hard time with um, kind of learning how to forgive and the feelings that come up with that because again, there's there's the angry phase, there's the loneliness, there's all these other emotions before we can get to the forgiveness piece. But when you do get to that piece, what I try to remind myself of is again, through empathy, somebody, uh, somebody had to go through something that they are not giving me what I need or that they're treating me this way or that they're judging me this way. So kind of realizing they're just projecting their own hurt and that it doesn't have anything to do with me, that I'm not the one that's that's broken and that I'm, I am enough and that you know I am worthy, that can kind of help in the forgiveness department a little bit because it's like, okay, it's, it's no longer about resentment and blame that the other person hurt me. Now it's, it's letting that go, releasing that feeling and saying, you know what, maybe they're going through something and they don't know how to to love me the right way. And I have to be okay with that and give my love in a different way to myself. Um, so I don't know if, if that helps anyone else with forgiveness. I know it's a hard thing and I still am kind of working on what that means, um, but I wanna pass it off to you, Becky, and, and hear what you're focusing on for your healing and your tips from this. So that's, it's funny, cause the first thing that I had where I had the question, how to forgive, so I'm going to ask the audience this because I have no idea this is something that I struggle with. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're watching and you have any advice, please share it with us on how to forgive. Yeah. Because like Kenzie mentioned, there is all of the emotions. And I think it's like where you said like loneliness and then there's like a grief. It's like the anger, the grief, the loneliness. And then it's, I think... I think this is a graphic because then it, I don't know if it was like a pyramid or it's like the like the negative emotions were like down here and then it was like acceptance and then like it it goes yeah like that or something um you know it is definitely feeling unloved for me it's definitely a lonely feeling um mm -hmm. I look happy and smiling on the outside but on the inside 
I've always felt like I belong nowhere. Yeah. I fit in with no one. Um, the friends I have are few and far between, but that's a choice. Um, because I don't, for me, I don't need like a ton of people. I, I'm not that person where it's like, I need to have like a hundred friends. Mm-hmm. I'm content with having quality versus quantity. Um, and now like, you know, I guess being a mom and as I get older, I tend to keep more to myself just because I'm tired of feeling disappointed and rejected mm-hmm. when I put my heart out there for other people. And I'm just tired of being taken advantage of. Um, so that that's for me, it's like just kind of um, focusing more on myself. And when I started my healing journey, that was like number one. It was like, okay, before becoming a mom, I had like my to-do list of, I need to focus on myself and learn how to take better care of myself, mm-hmm. learn how to cope with things and emotions in a healthy way before I can take care of somebody else, before I have a baby. I don't energetically, like the spiritual side mm-hmm. of me, I didn't want to pass on any um, trauma or, you know, I, I wanted to not pass on stuff like that because mm-hmm. I believe you know stuff it sticks to your body and right. I don't want to pass things on to her that's that was negative um I focus on taking care of and teaching mm-hmm. Violet how to be independent and she's already strong and she is very independent mm-hmm. um and I focus on knowing that I am the best mom and I continue to learn alongside Violet you know I I don't know it all I'm a new I'm a new mom I do have my core values and my um certain things healthy habits for her that that I'm like rooted in that I won't bend on you know some things I'm flexible some things they're non-negotiable um and you know my husband as well like it's not just me like we are um what's the word like we have the same values and the things that are important um, with Violet, the things that we're strict on, you know, he, he agrees with me in that, mm-hmm. you know, we're on the same page with that. Um, you know, so I focus on communicating and having a strong relationship with Derek so that we are a team. He always says to me, he's like, we are a really great team. We really work well together because we have different strengths. Mm-hmm. And we focus on, um, you know, like whether it's like stuff around the house, like we help each other out. I know I have some friends who they don't understand, you know, like he'll mop the floors, he'll dust. And I'm like, I just, he does it because I ask and I don't like doing it, you know, (laughs) or, you know, he's better at it. I always say, well, you're better at mopping the floors and dusting because I'm short. I have short arms. Can't read. (laughs) You know, so things like that. Um, you know, what I do, I clean other things. Mm-hmm. Um, like I do the bathrooms and the kitchen and stuff like that because I don't mind. That's like OCD me. It's like, right. I need to clean this the right way. Floors, I don't care. You come off yeah. those. <laughs> but that's also like, it, it seems like, oh, it's silly. She's talking about, you know, cleaning the house. But it's like, the, com- the, co- the point is the communication and, and the mutual respect about the situation, the cleaning situation. That's the important piece. It's like, like you said, you're a team. It's not it's not you guys against each other. This is something that my someone I'm seeing now always says to me. He's like, it's not us against each other. It's us against the problem. Mm-hmm. So that way it's not you're not, you know, pitted against each other, um, but you're both attacking the problem rather than each other. So that's, that's the point of, you know, good communication and a loving relationship and a healthy, you know, relationship is you don't get those feelings of unlovable or judginess because you communicate and you respect each other's feelings and you, you hear each other. That's the part that I think, you know, in all of my (laughs) not so great relationships that, I was missing again that feeling unlovable because I wasn't being heard and I wasn't able to communicate healthily about things that mattered to me. Um, so if you know cleaning is a thing that matters in a household when you live with someone. So if you're not communicating about those things and you just get angry, oh he never he never mops the floor. Like if you're just complaining about it and not communicating about it, that's what makes the difference of you know feeling lovable and heard in a relationship and not. Yeah. 
It, yeah, those that I can't stand where it's like, oh, he doesn't clean or he doesn't mop the floor. It's like, well, did you ask? Right. Did you, why are you complaining to me? Did yeah. you, could you please mop the floor? Yeah. Could you communicate with your communicate to, with them. Yeah. Um, one of the, you know, and I learned from Derek, he's very good at, um, I get overwhelmed easily and he's really good at, he taught me how to make lists. Mm -hmm. So when he has a project, he may, he writes like his to-do list or he, he's very good at taking a big project or a big thing and breaking it down into smaller pieces mm -hmm. where I see a big thing and I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed. I can't, overwhelmed. I can't focus, yeah. you know, like I can't focus. I'm the same way. Yeah. And that's what I learned from him. Um, he'll be working, you know, outside and he, until he's done or at a point to where he feels like he can stop and then he'll come inside um, and he's like, just keep me alive. Like, just feed me, you know, so yeah. like, I guess the love language, like where, you know, he's showing, he's working so hard for me. Access and for my, love, my love language is like, okay, making him like a home cooked meal or like a, like a good recovery meal, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, like that. Or even just like checking on him. I know in the summertime, I made like these, I think it was like watermelon. Like I decided to freeze like fruit mm -hmm. juice or it was like cantaloupe. I don't know. And I would put it in water for him because it was like really hot summer days. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and he's just digging the yard and, and um, making the patio. So it's like a lot of um, like laborious work and like sweating to death. And I'm like, you're going to be dehydrated, you know? So I was constantly running in and out of the house, like drink this, you know? And then like a couple hours later, I'm like, drink this, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, so that's how like we would take care of each other or even, you know, there's days where I'm just exhausted or he's just exhausted and we pick up each other slack if we need mm -hmm. to. Um, right. and that's what like a true team like you said it yeah. is like you were where you're not strong one day it's it's not always 50 50 yeah. it's sometimes it's 70 40 and you pick up the slack of the other person on that day that they're at the 40 so yeah. and, and don't get me sense. wrong like we do like bicker and argue or he gets annoyed with me because my to-do is like rifling off everything that I need for him to do and then he's like can you just tell me one at a time? And I'm like, no, I'll forget. So that's like a bad habit of mine that I'm trying to just tell him one thing at a time. But it's like, I'm like, oh, and then this. And can you do this? And can you like get that? Or I can't, yeah. can you put that away? And he's just like, you need to tell me one thing at a time. Um, you know, but we do, we can get on each other's nerves too. So it's and not every, like, even oh, healthy relationships. Have yeah. That. Like, yeah. oh, we are so helpful to each other. Yeah. We get annoyed with each other. So <laughs> I know he gets annoyed with me. I get annoyed with him. But it's oh, knowing you can always come back to it and talk about it after in, yeah. in, and be heard is what matters. It's like how you resolve it is what makes it a healthy you know yeah. good there's been times when I'm annoyed and I'm going to bed angry like I I know mm -hmm. people are like oh don't go to bed angry well sometimes I'm angry and sometimes I'm not getting over this until I go to sleep and wake up the next morning and yeah for me I don't know if this is like for you but if I'm angry at something I need to take time just away leave me alone yeah get away from me let me be angry let me calm <laughs> down yeah, the more you poke at me while I'm angry and try to fix it, the angrier I'll get. And then I get to a point where like, I don't even recognize my own character in that point. And then I'm like, I told you to leave me alone for a reason. <laughs> like, because I don't want to get myself to that point. I know I get to that point and I'm working on that. But because I know I get there, I'm asking you to give me the space until I'm ready to work on resolving it. Like I can't resolve it in the moment that I'm angry. At. It's just not going to work. Because yeah. so. you're trying to just be angry in the yeah. same way where I'm like, let me just be angry. Give me a couple yeah. hours. Just get away from me. Yeah. Give me my space. Let me be alone. But a lot of times I notice <laughs> men have like the fix it brain. Like they just want to fix it right away. And it's just like, I just yeah, give me a minute. Wait, it doesn't mean it's like the whole world is ending. I'm going to come back to you. Just give me the time away for right now. And me, my personal space. Yeah. Me alone. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I have on here, what I focus on. So I focus on my businesses and I continue to educate and grow without the clicks. 
and without being liked by other business owners. Um, that was a little difficult to kind of, that was like a really lonely feeling where it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm really, it's, it's, again, it's that feeling. And I think like intuitively and as an empath where it's like, or just the way, like the actions of others. I'm like, okay, these people don't, I don't feel like these people like me, but they don't even really know me yeah. because I tend to be more quiet. Um, so, and then I have here, I know my hustle game is strong and I do not need to prove myself to any of them. Um, and, you know, one of the things I know I'm a leader and this is probably why I feel lonely because, um, you know, leaders, you know, you're not following, you're leading. So it's like a lonely, um, lonely road sometimes. Like you said, focus on just continuing to educate, knowing that what you're doing is the right thing and, um, you know, giving yourself that love and support that other people are not giving you is like the true root of, of what we're talking about yeah because it is very lonely to like kind of trailblaze your own path and not have you know people be proud of you or support you or love you for it yeah like people are so quick to support a celebrity or or whatever but then you you create your business and they're just like yeah can I get a discount and it's like no that's not the point yeah. <laughs> like or like they'll share 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 like celebrity like posts yeah oh, can you like my post? Can yeah. My question. I know um, I had shared with you like a couple of things that I wor I'm working on in my business. Mm -hmm. I noticed like when, so like the last video with like manifesting where again, me being not specific, working on trying to be more specific. You know, I have two things coming up that I'm working on and this is the first time like I'm actually hiring someone to do something. Right. And it's, it is like an empowering feeling because I'm always like, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself because mm -hmm. I'm very particular in, um, and I, I'm sure like with your like cookie business, like you're mm -hmm. particular, you, the way you want things to look and present mm -hmm. and all that. So it's like letting go and, and trusting someone else mm -hmm. to see your vision and create something for you so right and love it the way that you love it like and care for it the way yeah. that you do yeah yeah so yeah because yeah, that my businesses were like my first children right you know? <laughs> pilot, those were my babies like and I was very protective of my babies <laughs> so, um but yeah I think that's that's all that I have here. So if you want to close it Yeah, out. we'll close it out. So just like reminders, again, feeling unlovable is very common. You're not alone. And again, it can come from all different reasons. Mine was particularly from past traumas and relationships. Becky's was from uh, businesses and being a mom and even before being a mom, just not being heard in instances. And that's really the root of it is not being heard or um, receiving what your, your need, not your needs, not being met essentially. Um, so making sure that you're having healthy conversations about what your needs actually are when you're feeling unlivable in a certain situation is very important. Um, and again, if you have any tips on how to forgive from these things, we're seeking advice. <laughs> we don't know everything. We do these videos with our experiences and what we know, but we also um, need help as well. So um, also give, let us know um, what you, what other topics you want to hear about. Um, we've gone through a lot of different types of topics. Um, so far, but if there's anything that you haven't heard yet, any type of difficult feeling or emotion or situation you're going through that you don't know how to process, we're happy to either do the topic anonymous, anonymously, or if you want to come on and be a guest as well, or um, just share your thoughts on it, we're happy to do that. Um, so don't forget to like, comment, share, follow Party with Becky and Kenzie, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.